Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Mickey Hudson, and I am going to be joining you on today's Fa uh, FAF Facebook Live. I'm going to give you guys a few minutes to come in and uh, settle down and sit down and get comfy, comfy and check your volumes and all that good stuff. Um, I would like to just uh, state a reminder that um, this is a free event to you, and we will not be asking for anything any personal information and especially no money. Um, my behind the scenes crew, uh, Meredith and Thomas are here with me today and they are working very hard to keep that out of the feed. Uh, but if you do see it, be sure not to click on it. It's not from us. Um, so again, for those of you that are just joining, my name is Mickey Hudson and I'm gonna be hosting today's FAF event and um, very excited. We are going to be covering the patchwork program, the single stitch program, and the taper program. So we're going to talk about all of those things today. Um, so why don't we just dive right in. Um, some of you may already know some of these things. Um, and for others, this is going to be brand new information. So um, either way, either if it's a review or it's new, um, I hope it's interesting. All right. So we're going to delve right in right away and talk about what is the patchwork uh, programming. So I'm going to come on over to my uh, machine screen. I am sewing and demoing on the FAF Creative icon, but there are many models that do have many of these features. So um, you would just need to look at your machine and see if you have uh, the stitch repeat. Um, which I'll show you what it looks like. So here we go. We're going to take a close up and look on the FAF Creative icon um, right here. So one of the things that I want to do on my last uh, Facebook Live, there were a few comments that it was too hard to see the screen. So the very first thing is I'm going to do is I'm going to change my background color on my screen. And you guys let me know if you prefer the black background or a lighter background. For those of you that may have the creative icon and not know that you can change your background, um, I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. We're gonna come down to our settings button and we're gonna touch that to open our settings. And it'll bring us to our settings menu. If I come over to the machine settings, I can, there's all these beautiful colors down here. And all of these, I can change my background to any of these colors. Ooh, pretty. But I'm going to go ahead and change it to a white background and see if you can see better. So uh, let me know in the comments if you prefer the lighter background or the darker background. I also do want to warn you, uh, those of you with, uh, it, she's going to wake up as soon as I say her name with an Alexa, uh, because I do talk to mine to turn off the, the lights. So if your uh, device starts going uh, crazy, I do apologize, uh, but I do really want you guys to see. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to talk about the patch, the single stitch programming down here, which is where we will find the patchwork and the single stitch. So I'm going to go ahead and touch the stitch repeat and bring this up. Now you'll notice that there's one that's for patchwork and one that's a single stitch program. I'm going to go ahead and start with the patchwork program. Now one thing that happens here is when you select it, there is a little reverse button that will pop up. It's this little icon at the top, at the very top. That is letting us know that we have to do something. So when I take my pattern, my pattern pieces or whatever I want to do, we're going to start with pattern pieces. I'm going to go ahead and select a straight stitch for this. I'm going to change my view and bring you up close and personal to what I am doing. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to bring my patchwork piecing in. 
I've got my two layers together. I'm going to come on over and position this. I'm going to talk about this right quick because I have met quite a few that do not understand the markings on your quarter inch foot. So when it comes to the quarter of an inch foot, this skinny toe here along this edge is one quarter of an inch. This edge is three eighths of an inch. Now these little red lines here, this one in the center is where my needle position is. And the one at the front is one quarter of an inch away from that needle position. And it's the same in the back. It's one quarter of an inch away from that needle position. So I'm going to start with the edge of my fabric right along that needle line. Everybody with me? I wish I could hear you guys. So pop that back on. Normally, I would have matching thread in the top and the bobbin, but because I'm going to be doing decorative st stitches, I'm going to go ahead and do this sample with embroidery thread in the bottom for my decorative stitches. But don't do this at home. Use good thread in the top and the bottom. So the first thing that I want to do is I do want to change my stitch length. So I'm going to come down to my edit stitch, stitch edit, sorry. And I'm going to change my stitch length from a 2.5 to a 2.0. Um, some people, whoops, some people do like to shorten their stitches even farther to one, one and a half. Um, but I am not that confident of a quilter. So I, I am confident that sounds wrong, but the seam ripper is still my best friend. So I want to be able to take stitches out if I need to. So going too small. I can't get them out. Oh, you want to, you don't want to see me. You want to see what I'm doing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and lower uh, my, my foot to line up this edge with my quarter of an inch edge here. So I'm going to go ahead and lower my foot. So I have the, the, the foot up and foot down here. If I lower my foot, it will lower my foot. If I hit the lower again, it lifts it just into that pivot point. So it is really, really a convenient, a convenient option. That's one thing about Fafa is they give us lots of options. So I'm going to go ahead and line this up with the single little toe on my foot. But I also want to line the top up with where my needle is. Does everybody get that? So I'm going to go ahead and come down and stitch to the bottom. So I'm just going to stitch on down. And again, I have a camera in front of me, so please forgive me if I'm not sewing straight. So I'm going to come down to the bottom. And I want the bottom to be at this line as well. So now I'm completely clear. But back over here, we have this little reverse button. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to touch my reverse button right here and engage that. Why didn't you do it? Hold on, it's making a big fat liar out of me for some reason. So I'm just going to stitch on down again. I swear I play with this all the time. I really do. <laughs> Let me see. Let me get you back in here. Turn off the reverse. Thank you. 
Oh. I'll let you know why it's not behaving because I'm in a hurry. So you do have to let the machine, fin the FAF creative icon or any of your FAFs finish. And I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to come back over here because one of the things that I have that is causing my problem, because I normally like to do this. Now, one of the things that FAF does is it gives us plenty of options to control what we want to do. And I normally like a tie off at the beginning. I like it to cut. I like it to do all that stuff. So I'm going to show you. And that's what I had on so that when it came to the end, I wanted it just to finish. But I had all these other programs still going and I hadn't let it finish its stitch. So that's what was going on with me right now. So I'm going to go and turn those off. So what I can do is I can come over here to my my tie off options, which is the last option. And I'm going to go ahead and turn these off just for this uh, demonstration so that it will not mess me up again. So now I'm going to select a straight stitch again. And I'm going to change my stitch edit to 2.0. And I'm going to select stitch repeat and patchwork. And now it will do what I want it to do. So I'm going to grab another piece of fabric. I absolutely loved live TV. Stuff like that always happens. So I'm going to line these up again. I'm going to lower my foot and touch it again to pivot so that I can get everything exactly where I want it to be. I'm going to go ahead and give it some gas and you will notice that it's not going to tie off and it's just going to sew. So when I come to the end, now if I hit the reverse button, it'll do what I wanted it to do. Or is it? My tie-offs are on. The reason that I can recognize that it's not doing what I'm asking it to do. There we go. When you finish the stitch, I swear I'm making this look harder than it is. When you finish the stitch, and this is how I could recognize that it wasn't finished, was when you select a straight stitch, it's gonna be a straight stitch all the way down. But as soon as we touch the reverse button, you'll see that it's gone. And now it's making the stitch just that length that we've asked it to. So now if I come over here, I can just relax, make sure I'm in the right position, touch my start stop function, and it will stop automatically. Everybody get that, or did I completely confuse you guys? Any comments, good or bad, would be appreciated. <laughs> I'm just going to come and put it in position. And it just automatically stops. So this is great when you're chain piecing. Okay, so let me go through that again. I'm gonna go ahead and, whoops, wrong camera, select my straight stitch or any stitch. You can do any stitch with this. Let me do, let me do a different stitch here. So I can do the same thing with the, the patchwork program with any stitch. 
So I'm just going to pull out some uh, cotton fabric with a tearaway stabilizer. I am going to change my foot. I'm going to change my angle here in a second. And I'll show you the same thing. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the start and let it stitch out a few. And then when I'm ready to say I want to do this, it's going to be the last one. I'll touch my reverse button. It's going to finish the stitch. And then if we look over here, you can see that it stopped. And now it's programmed at that many stitches. You guys, you guys understand that? So now it will repeat these stitches as many times as I want to. Are there any questions? All right. Another way to use it is for quilting. So I will use it sometimes just if I want to do quick, quick blocks around the quilt because I can program in the length and then just go to sleep and zone out. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm gonna put my straight stitch back on and I'm going to put my quarter of an inch foot back on. You don't wanna see that. And I'm gonna come back over here Now, remember earlier how I told you these lines can be very helpful? So what I'm going to do here is I want to start a quarter of an inch away from the edge. So I'm going to do that by lining up my edge with this quarter of an inch away from my needle mark. And I want to keep my edge of my, my seam along the quarter of an inch here. So I'm going to go ahead and again tell it I want to do a patchwork program. So when you select a new stitch, it's going to deselect your patchwork. So you need to come back to stitch repeat and make sure that patchwork program is underlined. And you'll know because you have this little reverse button. So I'm going to come down here. I'm going to stitch until this seam comes to my quarter of an inch here. And then I'm going to touch my reverse button. I'm going to take this nice and slow. And again, I only have to worry about this first one. So I'll hit my reverse. And now I can just come and touch start. Oops. I hit the reverse again. I'm going to hit start. And then I can just turn and pivot. Oops, I miscalculated apparently. I wonder if my squares are square. Oops, I'm off again. Don't do this at home, do it the right way. <laughs> So I want to talk about what I did here when I didn't quite make it. I just took another couple of stitches and then I came over here and touched my stitch restart option and that reset the stitch so that I could come down the next side and be the program length. You guys get that? Are there no questions? All right. All right, so the next thing I want to do is um, talk about the single stitch uh, repeat. So the, the single stitch repeat, I'm going to 
select the single stitch repeat. I'm going to make you all dizzy for a second. Hold on. So single stitch repeat. This is really great if you're like making your artwork and you just want to scatter uh, decorative stitches or you want stitches to stitch in a different direction, just one at a time. Um, and you can make that do, uh, make that go. I'm going to be making a couple of cards. So I've got one started here. And so what I've done is I've taken just one of the quilt stitches, which is a wavy line. And then I took one of the decorative overcasting stitches. And I actually programmed this one in, which I talked about last time. Nancy did one and I did one where we talked about sequencing. So I took it into sequencing and I, cre I created a few and then I made it more narrow and created a few and made it more narrow and more narrow and more narrow. So that's how I did that. But you can look back on the Facebook Live in sequencing in sewing and sequencing in embroidery to cover that part. But we're going to talk about when we want to do single single stitches. And that's what I'm going to do here. Okay, I'm going to change my thread and put in a lighter green. Don't know how it's going to look, but we'll find out. And I do want to change my foot. I am notorious for using my quarter inch foot with decorative stitches. So that's why I keep talking to myself about changing the foot. And I know I'm the only one who ever does that, right? Okay. So what I wanna do is we've got this little um, start of a palm tree. So I'm gonna come on over to my decorative stitches. Oops, you can't see what I'm doing. So I'm going to come over to my decorative stitches and um, five. so I'm going to decorative stitches in the submenu one, you'll find leaves and flowers. And I did leaf number 17. Now, if I come down to the single stitch program, you can see how it's just going to stitch one. Over here, which may be a little difficult for you to see, but there's an option here. It has a number one right there with a plus and a negative next to it. I can add my stitches if I want two or three or 10, et cetera. But I'm only gonna do one. And then I'm gonna come on over here. Now, when I do work on cards, I have no need for a stabilizer because it is pretty stable. And when it comes to sewing machine needles, um, I have a little pin cushion right next to my sewing machine and I throw old needles away. But there are some times where I start every new project with a new needle. And there are times where when I take my needle out at the end of a project, I know it's not all the way dead. And that's where it goes in my pin cushion rather into my, my needle recycle. So that when I want to do stuff like this, I can pull that out and reuse it because it's dying anyway. The cardboard's going to definitely kill it. But normally I would use a universal, um, like the Faf Universal, uh, or excuse me, the Faf Embroidery 80. And that's the one I like because it has a larger eye and a sharp point. And you want to be able to see what I'm doing. So if you look on the screen here, you can see the direction that the stitch is going to stitch out. By the way, this is also real size. So this is the actual size of the stitch. But you can see the direction it's going to stitch out, which is why I know I'm going to change or I'm going to start from this direction because I'm going to start with the base of the leaf and come out. So I'm gonna go ahead and touch my start button.
and it will finish. Now I can come back over here and program in a tie off at the end if I wanted to, which I think I will do. And I'm going to go ahead and use my scissors, my cut function on my Baff Creative icon and cut. And I'm going to throw in a couple of more leaves. So I'm going to go, look at that. I'm going to come right here and I'm going to go ahead and touch my start. Isn't it cool? There we go. So now I've told it to do a, a tie off. I can also program in a cut. And I'm going to put one more. So I can embellish and add, and, and I can add fabric. I can do all kinds of fun stuff. OK. So another place that the single stitch is just really fun. Okay, so I've got my palm tree. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to select my miscellaneous. And so miscellaneous is menu six. And the sub menu two is animals. And I'm going to come take this little critter right here. So my happy little monkey, I'm going to come into stitch repeat and select a single stitch. And I'm going to once again change my thread and I'm going to make a purple monkey because I want to. I am the artist. I want a purple monkey. So I'm just going to make a little monkey hanging out of the tree. So once again, when you look at the screen, when you look at the screen, this is the way that it's going to stitch out. So I'm going to come and position my monkey so that he's kind of hanging out of the tree. Get my thread out of there. And again, needle down, needle up, needle down again. And I can position him right where I want him to be. So I'm going to make him swing in a little bit. And I'm going to touch my start. But this is great on quilts when you want to just add a little uh, decorative embellishment to it. It's great for like wall hanging artwork that you would like to do. I love the monkey. I've used him many, many times. So how are we doing with our monkey? So what do you guys think? Is he cute? So I just want to play and add some more stuff down at the bottom as well. But I'm going to talk about, so he didn't stitch out exactly the way I would like it to. If you notice, he's gapping a little bit. So normally I would test my stuff on old cardstock before I do it on the actual project. But let me show you how you can correct this if this starts to come up, because it is quite cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch this guy out again on my practice cardstock. And first of all, I want to see how much of it was my manhandling of the cardstock versus the 
actual stitch. So I'm just going to let it stitch out and really keep my hands off the, the card because I don't want to interfere with it at all. So here he's still kind of doing it a little bit, where he's kind of gapping a little bit. If you look at the actual design, I'm going to bring you in a little bit closer so you can kind of see. But if you look at the actual design, there is no gap here. But I'm going to show you how you can fix that right in the built-in. So I'm going to move this back out. OK. So down at the bottom here, we have an option that is balance. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to touch the balance option, and it's going to bring up my monkey. And if I come into balance length and width, width I can adjust where he's gapping. And he's actually gapping in the length department. So I'm actually going to make my monkey here look the way he does here. So I'm going to stretch him out. And if you kind of look here, I'm gonna bring it in. You can see now his arm has some gap here, where his arm has some gap here. I'm gonna make it a little bit more extreme. All right. So once we have that, we'll come down here and tell it okay. So it still looks exactly the same, except this time when I stitch him out, the Faf Creative icon is going to compensate for that problem and fix it. So you see here where he compensated and he fixed the problem. So this is what it was doing the first time. And that's what it's doing now. So the balance is awesome. So if you've never uh, played in the balance before, it's really awesome. I always test stitch because sometimes a stitch will just sew beautifully on one kind of fabric and then you throw in something heavier and it will want to separate. Well, now you know you can go in and fix it to work with whatever fabric that you are working on. So um, any questions about the balance? So I'm going to show you another one where that came up is I'm going to come on over to my star, which is in decorative 5.2. And all the way down, whoops, you can't see what I'm seeing. So I'm going into my decorative menu. I'm going into submenu two. So the decorative menu is number five. So submenu two, and I'm coming down to 44. And I'm also going to do a single stitch. So I'm going to do stitch repeat, but I only want one. And I'm going to test stitch it on my my test cardstock. So I'm just going to go ahead and start. I'm going to come over here into tie off and I'm going to select thread cut as well. So I don't have to keep cutting my thread. So when I come here, so again, this star, this star is having a little bit of an issue right here on the cardstock. So I'm going to come over to my balance and I'm going to make the star on the screen look like this. So I'm going to come over 
to balance. And I'm going to make my, my stitch here look like this. He's actually separating right there. So if you can see, I'm trying to make this look like this. So you can see how it's starting to separate right in the middle so that it's looking more like this. Then I tell it OK. And I'm going to. So what balance does is I show it the problem so it knows how to fix it. It's an amazing feature. And it's one a lot of people don't even realize you have. So because I programmed in the cut, he's going to cut. So you see here, let me move out a little bit. You can see here where the first one was having a problem. And when I fixed it, now he's coming out perfectly. Yay! It's so exciting. So now I'm ready to add this to my Christmas card, if I wish to. So this is a great way to make Christmas cards. You just throw a couple of random designs, stitch out your fonts, and you can get really creative or keep things really simple. And I'm going to put another one right here. I do get kind of in a trance when I do these kind of things. I am going to change my stitch over to, uh, I'm still in the decorative, but I'm going to category or the sub menu three, and I am choosing stitch number 45. And then I'm gonna come down again and do stitch repeat or single stitch. And I've got this nice pretty stitch. So once again, I just want to test it on my, my blank cardstock, make sure it's going to do what I want it to do. Get no hands. My hands are completely off the card. Also, this is really helpful um, to have a flat sewing surface. Now, um, FAF does create an extension table for your creative icon or your 4.5 or your uh, Sensation Pro, et cetera. And having this flat surface does make this extremely easy to take your hands off. But as you can see, he stitched out just fine. So I'm gonna come on over here. I'm gonna clip my threads because it makes me crazy. And then I can just randomly put a couple of other stitches and again if you go to the facebook live with the sequencing in embroidery or sequencing in sewing you could also do this on the embroidery side of things as well as the sewing side so now all i have to do is add happy holidays down at the bottom Now, for those of you that are going to be making cards and stuff like that, um, let me just clip these again. You will have threads on the back. So if you don't like that, you can actually get uh, cardstock and just 
So you can actually just, oh, I just dropped it. Come on, you. So when you buy cardstock, you can get them in all kinds of colors or you can, um, or just plain white or all kinds of stuff. But if I have a lot of stitches and I don't want them to show, I just pull another one out of the pack and kind of glue them together so that when you open it up, it's all clean on the inside. But I'm going to add a little bit more. Um, can you balance stitches on the embroidery side? Uh, let's take a look. I'm going to go over to embroidery. I've never actually done that. It really doesn't happen on embroidery because the embroidery uh, module is taking over. And it's so the, the thickness of the fabric and the feed dogs are not in playing a part. Um, but no, I do not see a balance here for, but let me bring in a stitch. But part of what is happening with the sewing side and why, why balance is so handy is because your feed dogs are coming into play and the thickness of the fabric is coming into play and the type of fabric is coming into play. So uh, that's where the, you know, the, the Faf Creative Icon or any of, you, any of your machines that have the balance need to have a little idea of what's going on as it's feeding the fabric through where when you do embroidery, everything's hooped, everything's already taken care of in the hoop. So um, but let me see if stitch edit. No. So if you come to, when you're in embroidery and you bring in a stitch, you get an option here called stitch edit. And this will allow you to edit it just like you would on your sewing side. So I can change my stitch length, my stitch width. If I were working with buttons, it would ask what size button I'm working with, et cetera. Um, but as you can see, there is no balance. But like I said, the embroidery hoop takes care of that for us. Does that answer that question? Or does that make sense to you? Okay. All right. All right. As always, running out of time, and I want to get to my favorite, is the tapering. So some of you may have used tapering before. Some of you... Is balance on the performance icon? Yes, balance is on the performance icon. It's on the 4.5. Um, there's, I think there's quite a few of them that have balance. So if you just take a look at your sewing screen, um, when you select a stitch, you should see it somewhere. Um, you can also look in your owner's manual and see if, it, if there's anything on balance. Um, but yeah, there's quite a few of the sewing and embroidery machines that have uh, balance, but the performance icon definitely. Okay. Now tapering is really cool. What tapering is, is it will take a stitch like this and then taper it at the end so you can create nice little corners and frames and all kinds of fun stuff. So for those of you that quilt, for instance, um, it's a great way to create a frame around a quilt label um, and just all kinds of fun stuff. So I'm going to talk about tapering. I am going to change my thread to a lighter color so you can see it better than this dark purple on the black, come back over to the light green. And you can't see what I'm doing, but this is a tip for all of you. It doesn't matter what brand of machine you're on. So if you're visiting us from another brand, this is also what you wanna do. When it comes to Cut, uh, removing your thread from your sewing machine, don't grab it by the spool and pull, which is very tempting and it's a very bad habit for many of us. But instead, cut your thread from the top and pull it through the needle. The machine is designed to thread one way. So when you pull it backwards, it just spits lint and, and gunk and then you have to have it cleaned more often. So it's a hard habit to break. Um, I still catch myself pulling it 
even though I know better. But uh, I do cut most of the time. All right. So let's go into, I'm going to turn off the single stitch repeat. And we already had this nice little stitch up here. But we're going to change this to a different stitch. Now in needle art is my favorite, my personal favorite um, stitch for uh, tapering. However, you can use tapering on so many stitches. But this is the one that I just showed you the sample of. Oops, untangle. There we go. So I'm going to come on down. It is in needle art, which is menu three. It's in submenu three, and it's stitch number 38. Now, when I hit that, I don't know if you noticed this little icon came up. Let me come over here and see if we can get rid of it. And then we come over to the utility stitch. So you see how it went away? But you're going to watch right here when I go to needle art, submenu three, stitch number 38. It's going to pop up right under the cloud. And there's my tapering options. So what the tapering right now, if you look at it, it is just a square edge. But if I come over here to taper, I have all these options to choose from. Now you may not be aware of it, but you can make this window bigger. One of the corners is shaded. Whenever you see that shaded corner, you can touch and drag and make it bigger. So right here, I'm gonna bring it in a bit closer. You can see it a little better. It's a little angle. Sorry about that. But multi means it's going to do it at the top and at the bottom. I can say, whoops, I can say I just want, I got to select my stitch again because I hit it with my foot. There we go. So when I come to taper, I can do multi, like I said, at the beginning, at the end, or I can just say, I just want it to do the beginning, or I just want it to do the end, or I want the beginning to go in one direction, and I want the end to go in a different direction. So there's just lots of fun stuff that can be done. I'm going to go ahead and choose multiple, multiple, and I'm going to choose the 45, and there's my little reverse button icon again. That means there's something for me to do. Now, right behind the reverse button, it might be a little hard to see, but you can see that it's starting at that taper. And what it needs is for me to tell it when it's ready to turn its corner. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here, sorry, and I'm going to give it a little gas, or I could use the start button. But if you watch carefully, he's going to start in the top left, start right corner, and then taper into the stitch. So you see how he's tapering right from that corner? Give it some gas. And when I am ready to turn it around, I will just come up and hit the reverse button and you will see that it'll taper into a point. So see how it comes back into a point? Oops, I got the cut on. I'm going to turn that off. And I'm going to put my foot down and I'm going to drop my needle. Okay. So I'm going to come back over here to my tie off options because this time I don't want it to, to tie off or to cut. So I've just turned everything off and I'm going to come back here. And now I can turn my corner. And it's going to start with the taper. And again, I can go as long as I want. But when I'm ready to turn it again, I will hit the reverse button again. So unlike the patchwork programming, which once you hit the reverse button, it remembers this one, the reverse button, is part of the command. So we're in control of when we want to turn things around. And 
And by selecting the needle down, he's going to hold my spot. So when I turn the corner again, he's going to, let me make sure I'm straight. Because I am working around my needle or my camera, so I'm not always sewing straight. So I'm going to get him started. But do you see how he's doing that? So he's creating those little corners for tapering. There are quite a few stitches that you can choose from. And different things give you different looks. It's really, really fun. So if you select any of the stitches and this comes up, you can use your tapering in that. So in this one, I'm going to say I want to do the beginning at... 60 in the end I'm going to go 60 in a different direction so oops and you can see where it's going to go ahead and do the taper oops took my foot off the gas are there any questions about any of this So I'm going to come and fetch my reverse button. So he's ready to turn a different way, but I'm going to go ahead and show it to you. Because I had it go at one angle at the top and a different angle on the bottom. And it will sometimes reshape your uh stitches as well so i'm going to come back over here so like for satin stitches some of these can be really fun oh, let's take this guy. and we're going to taper him we're going to just go ahead and do let's do eh, let's do 60 at the top and the bottom but you can see i don't know if you can see but it does some weird things at, at the turning point because it's going to turn and that can create some really fun corners. So I'm going to go ahead and do this fun little corner. So I'm going to go ahead and let it stitch out a bit. So again, when I'm ready to turn the corner, I just hit the reverse button and it will finish its stitch. And I can go ahead and turn it 90 degrees. And if I hit the reverse button, it will finish. So you see how it made that little corner that way? I could change the angle. I could say, I really don't want it to do that much. Let's do 30. Let's see what 30 would look like. So let's come over here and I'm going to come in. I'm just going to hit my start. I hit my reverse to let it know I wanted to turn. Oops, I think I did it. No, I did it right. Okay. And then I'm going to... And I'm going to go ahead and hit my reverse because I really only want the... Whoops! <laughs> I actually hit... So when you touch the reverse, this is also an important little feature. Touch the reverse to turn the corner, touch and hold the reverse, and it's gonna start sewing backwards, which is what I did here. But as you can see, just changing the angle, this was 60 degrees and this was 30 degrees. So you can play with your angles and create 
different corners with some of your decorative stitches. So always have a test piece out. I personally like to use um, the Stitch and Ditch from Inspira, which is my favorite stabilizer, um, for sewing stitches on fabric. Uh, normally when I'm sewing anything heavier than that, I will use a tearaway, but I do love the Inspire Stitch and Ditch. Um, it's really one of my favorites. So how are we doing? We are almost out of time. Are there any questions before we wrap it up? I want to thank you all for my, for your patience at the beginning when I had my on-air flub. Um, it just never fails, uh on air, something always goes wrong. So thank you for being patient with that. Um, I will come back through the questions. So if you think of a question later that I can answer, I will come in and check periodically to see if there's any future questions. Um, but if there are no further questions, uh, I think we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up for now. And I thank you all for coming and I hope to see you next time. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.